say shout out to my baby cousin BJ who wants me to start showing up to YouTube looking like a person because he'd be like why you didn't comb your hair for YouTube so if he's watching cuz I'm lazy Okay, no, today we are talking about the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. I read this book. Okay, first of all, I'm just so happy that I've been reading a fiction because I have been reading books about finance and books about like communication and being a good person and all of that is important, but it's something cozy about a good little fiction. Even if it's a little murder mystery dumped inside. And that's exactly what you're going to get from Jamie McBride, okay? He's giving you the tea. He's giving you fun. He's giving you plot development. He's giving you, I took my time and made this. And that's why I'm messing with it. And them cops and big time muckety muck that was running behind them Jews for the body they found in that old well. They can't find a speck against them now. For God took in the whole business, the water well, the reservoir, the dairy, the skeleton, every itty bitty they could find against them Jews and washed it clear. So just the premise of the book, just so you know, there is this city, um, and this is back in like the 30s, but there is this city uh, called Chicken Hill. It's near Pottstown. They don't really like fully tell me what state, but keep up with me. We're in America. Anyway, so all these immigrants are here. There's blacks, there's Jews, there is German Jews, there is Russians, Polish, um, and Italians. And we're seeing the very early social hierarchies and how they were formed back in the 30s when it's like, hey, I'm fresh off the boat. This is how I'm gonna like build up my life legacy. This is, this is the beginning of a new start. So most people are first generation immigrants into this place, whether they move from the South or they move from their home country or whatever it was, bam, they're all in Chicken Hill. And what we have is Heaven and Earth grocery store. And this grocery store is like, the center of their world, which makes sense. A grocery store would be that. This grocery store is the center of their world. So all walks of life come in and out of this world. And in doing so, they all build relationships with one, the store owner, but also kind of with each other through time and all living in like this one community up until Miss Shona died. Spoiler, I'm sorry. Did I, did I mean to spoil it? I don't know if I meant to spoil it or not, but I did, so I'm sorry. But we know it's some murder mystery. Stop playing. So some things you can look forward to if you're reading this book, if you're going to read this book, is you're going to get... You're going to get that historical. Y'all know I love me a good historical perspective. You're gonna get your historical fix. You're gonna get an understanding of like the early race relations in America around the 30s. And um, I think it's really enlightening, especially with everything going on politically. I ain't trying to get political with y'all. I'm not really trying to get political with nobody. I don't even know the last time I watched the news, okay? I am in Cincinnati, okay? And the one thing that I am doing while I'm here is like detoxing from all of the noise and all of the drama and I understand it's important but I also understand I can't fix it so don't come for me in my comments I can't fix it I can't fix it Shh, relax okay so what I loved is he is showing us this city and they're all working together in a way um so you see these early race relations and you see the stereotypes and how they kind of build themselves and you see where things kind of took a turn and some of the things we don't understand about like being American and how that started and I think it's really interesting because like 
the thing about America, and people hate this, is we don't really have, like, a good identity. Because we are, like, a mishmash posh of every culture and every tradition, sometimes it's hard for us, and not only black people, but other people, too, to really identify, like, where is my place in this country? It was funny, because I was talking to this guy that I really like, and we were talking about it because I'm making a read it with me, and he was saying that, um, he, he liked the, he said he liked the perspective, but he also felt like black people had a better grasp on who they were back then than they do now, and I was like, it's hard, it's easy to understand the bottom, <laughs> Like, I think there was a time after um, Civil War, of course, the Reconstruction, Jim Crow, we didn't have to, like, create an identity for ourselves. We were very much told who we were and what, how we would maintain our place in society. And it wasn't a good position, but it was an understood position. But again, it's easy to understand who you are when someone's telling you. Um, but I think that when you're truly free, it is really hard to say, okay, what will I do with this freedom? I never thought about that, have you? Um, so, yeah, so I think I think the, some things in there that I really love, some things that I really love, I really love the idea of, like, the unity that works in a book. I think that so many times um, there's this big conversation, this large overarching umbrella conversation about race, right? Blacks against white, um... You know, Jews aren't white, um, Italians are this. There's this overarching um, umbrella idea of what relation. Something's in my teeth. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm back. Okay. So all of a sudden, my teeth was some dead skin all over my lips. A girl, BJ, you be right. You be right. You be right. You can't whoop me, though. Anyway, so there's this overarching umbrella about race relations in the in America. And there's, but there's also these one-on-one -on -one personal relationships that move outside of race. And I think those relationships are a lot more authentic. I think those relationships are a lot more real. I think those relationships are actually more representation, more representative of American society than that overarching umbrella experience that we get. So what I'm saying is we're often depicted by our outburst of civil disrest between blacks and whites or Hispanics in the government or Asians feeling attacked when the COVID came out, right? Those become the, the large conversations that everybody must take part in. And you got a lot of ignorant conversations that come out of that. But what I think James A. Bride does really well in his book is really bring those smaller in-house um, water cooler conversations. Those one-on-one -on -one real house door closed in my living room conversations become the vibrancy of that neighborhood, of that community. And I would go on to suggest that those conversations or more impactful and more representative of American society than anything they were hearing through the media. I've always thought it was so interesting to me. I'm from Texas, y'all. If y'all are not from Texas. Um, and so then I've always been friends with a lot of Hispanic people. I went to a 98% Hispanic high school. And I remember it being so interesting how we are, how some, pe some people that, some of my peers' parents felt about black people and how they were, felt so disconnected from that narrative. And I would say that when we're moving off of stereotypes, we can have feelings that aren't really based in reality. And you don't really know a person's true person until you're dealing with that person. And I think um, when you read the book, you'll see <laughs> like how those relationships truly play out and how rich they are outside of 
how those, sorry, I had to read comment, how those relationships exist and play out outside of the eight, the larger narrative about what it is to be an American, uh, what it means to be a person of color, what does it mean to be white, right? Um, yeah, I, I think the book was really brilliant in that way. I don't want to ruin too much. If you haven't read it, but you're like a, a good lover of history, a lover of like um, fiction, of course, a good little murder mystery in there. Um, I absolutely think you should read, especially if you enjoy like understanding different cultures and experiences. I always find that interesting. I know I have friends who are like you. You did a, you you know you studied literature. Like, what's your favorite author? You only read black books. The funny thing is, I love to study all cultures. Ain't nobody want to read about black trauma day in and day out. I don't have time. Like, give me somebody else's experience, right? I think that makes books much more rich. So if you're like that and those are the kind of things you like, I absolutely, absolutely recommend this work. But I don't want to do too much right here because it's like an initial review. I do want to have us in a space, you know, with my people that already read the book. We're going to talk about it and I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to spill the real tea, tea, tea uh, there. So there will be another book. This is like, if you haven't read it, this is where you should be. If you've already read it and you was like, okay, girl, this ain't what you usually do. Meet me in the other video. I got you. Uh, of course, like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know I need y'all.